On June 18th, JD announced an investment of $550 million from Google. It was a historic deal on many levels. Not just because the two companies involved are gargantuan; JD is almost $60 billion in market cap these days, but because there really hasn't been many strategic tie-ups of this scale between U.S. and Chinese internet companies. Not like ever. And the timing is especially interesting, given all the talk of a U.S.-China trade war and all that. It made for a good headline, didn't it? Top U.S. internet company and top China e-commerce company entering into a big deal. But the real deal isn't about U.S. or China. Nope, it's really about a race to win the rest of the world. The president's key economic team goes to China.、Uh, after a whole night thinking, I say I still want to do it. <laughs> Hi everyone! We are Tech Buzz China by Pan Daily, powered by the Seneca Podcast Network. We are a new weekly podcast focused on giving you a peek into what's buzzing within the tech community in China. We uncover and contextualize unique insights, perspectives, and takeaways on headline tech news that don't always make it into English language coverage. Tech Buzz China is a part of PanDaily dot com, a new English language site that tells you everything about China's innovation. I am one of your two co-hosts, Ray Ma, and I'm Yingying Lu, your other co-host. This week, we are going to play a little game with you guys. We're going to give you a small trivia question, the answer to which we share within this podcast. If you tweet at us with the correct answer, so please tweet at Tech Buzz China, we'll enter you into a raffle to win some special Tech Buzz swag. The question is: During this year's Six One Eight Festival that just ended on June eighteenth. How much in goods were sold on JD.com? Give us a number in USD, please. And again, if you do enjoy listening to us, please take the time to leave us a rating or review on iTunes and elsewhere. On March twentieth, two thousand eighteen. Amazon exceeded Google to become the second largest company in the world, at a market cap of seven hundred sixty-three billion dollars. Granted, ten days later, Microsoft achieved the same feat. But today's episode is all about e-commerce. Yeah, Google and Amazon obviously compete on many things, including cloud services and video streaming. But Google is the most nervous about e-commerce. While Amazon is estimated to account for 44% of U.S. e-commerce, it does not have such a commanding lead globally. China, as we all know, is dominated by Alibaba, who has over 55% market share, according to iResearch. That still leaves the rest of the world up for grabs, to a degree, anyway. Google could have worked with Alibaba, of course, who is aggressively expanding overseas. But to get the attention of a five hundred billion dollar company is probably much harder than investing for a one percent or so stake in JD to test the waters. At least that's our theory. But was this a good deal? What were some of the dynamics behind this deal? Let us break it down for you. First, we are going to introduce you to JD, which is short for Jingdong, a combination of the founder's own name, Liu Qiangdong, and his ex-lover's name. To make it simpler, we'll refer to Liu by his English name, Richard, from now on. Basically, Richard came from an extremely poor family, and indeed, in Chinese media, he still plays up his humble village beginnings. This explains why, when he got admitted into Beijing's Renmin University, a top ten university in China, he focused on escaping poverty and began experimenting with starting his own business while still in school. Yeah, Richard was always quite the entrepreneur. In 1998, after failing a restaurant venture, he rented a counter in today's Zhongguancun District in Beijing, selling CD-ROMs and CD burners. Wow, so old school. Yeah, things were going well though, and by 2001, he was actually the biggest seller of CD-ROMs in all of China. But then, in 2003, SARS hit, and no one wanted to leave the house, so sales suffered. When Richard learned that you can sell things over the internet, though, he immediately tried it out. By the end of 2004, he was confident enough in selling online that he closed all his offline stores and went all in on e-commerce. 
The company JD eventually went public in March 2014, actually a few months before rival Alibaba did. It raised almost two billion dollars when it IPO'd on the Nasdaq. Between Alibaba and JD, JD started off closer to Alibaba's initial business model of B to C versus C to C. It was an e-tailer first and foremost, and only later added marketplace functionality. Today, JD has annual revenues of more than fifty-five billion dollars and is almost profitable. It's still best known for consumer electronics versus apparel for Alibaba. In terms of total e-commerce, JD has between twenty and thirty percent or so of market share in China, depending on which report you use. For the average Chinese citizen, Richard Liu is just as well known as Jack Ma. Besides, it has two other much larger corporate partners and shareholders already on its team. Yeah, there's Tencent, who's JD's largest shareholder, increasing its holdings over the years, and now has a stake of 18 percent. There's also Walmart, who owns over 10 percent. Google's stake, then, in comparison, is really minimal. Secondly, Richard Liu specifically mentioned that this deal was really to showcase JD's efforts to internationalize. In 2015, JD already tried to conquer Indonesia, then Russia. In Indonesia, it met with fierce resistance from Alibaba, who had invested more than a billion dollars each into local e-commerce players Tokopedia and Lazada, the latter of which Alibaba now has a controlling stake. In Russia, Alibaba was able to win with AliExpress, which is a product that sells primarily Chinese products to international buyers. So, to sum, Alibaba is number one in both Russia and Indonesia. Yeah, thwarted in Russia and Indonesia, JD went into Thailand and India, but both have been really tough markets to crack. So, not only is Alibaba there, but so is Amazon. Maybe in India, there's still some hope, though. Its shareholder Walmart just bought majority control of the leading local e-commerce player Flipkart. But while JD may not have been doing as much e-commerce sales as it wants, it has been quietly beefing up its overseas logistics. It's built over 110 warehouses on five different continents, including in such major global hubs as Hong Kong, Tokyo, LA, and Amsterdam. This has always been an area of strength for JD. In fact, it's one of the main reasons I personally never liked Taobao or Tmall and prefer to stick with JD instead. For pretty much anything non-apparel related, I prefer JD because JD centralized logistics instead of Taobao, where the delivery was handled by a third party. So while JD's delivery was very reliable, Alibaba's can sometimes be very iffy. Furthermore, I think JD was one of the first players globally to do same-day delivery. When I was living in downtown Beijing, I regularly placed orders past 10 p.m. at night and received things before noon the very next day. And JD's logistics has been enabling that to happen since 2010. Hmm, seems like JD has improved a lot even since then. During last year's Singles Day, JD's packages arrived within two hours after consumers placed orders in 312 cities, within one hour in 60 cities, and within half an hour in 18 cities. That's faster than most of my Uber eats. Mine too. What's most impressive, though, is that this year JD said that over 90% of the orders placed during its shopping festival, the one from June 1st to June 18th, which ended just a couple weeks ago, were delivered same day or next day. That's over 90%. They also pulled a little PR stunt by showing off their newest delivery robots in Beijing. Those robots currently can make 80 to 100 deliveries a day each. That's lower than the 100 to 200 per day humans can accomplish, but soon, of course, it's expected that the robots will be able to exceed that. JD is already deploying technology that Google and Amazon have only shown in ads. How can JD get such amazing delivery times? The answer is that it's been digitizing its inventory, tracking consumer behavior, and investing in automation for a long time now. It's also been hugely successful at predicting inventory needs. Where Amazon's inventory turnover is an average of 44 days, JD's is only 20. And while Alibaba eventually caught on to the importance of logistics and now has its Tainal subsidiary valued at nearly 20 billion, JD isn't far behind. It spun off its logistics business in 2017 and just raised 2.5 billion from Hill House in Sequoia, China, in February of this year. That makes the business valued at over 13 billion dollars. JD, meanwhile, still retains over 80% ownership. 
According to a leading e-commerce analyst in China, there are really three major ways for Chinese e-commerce platforms to expand overseas. One is to do what AliExpress did and go about it yourself. Another is to invest significant stakes in foreign players and outright acquire them, as in the case of Alibaba and Lazada in Southeast Asia. The third is to set up strategic partnerships, such as what JD and Google have just done. In his opinion, the last is the most capital efficient, quickest to see results, and thus lowest risk, especially for Google, who is relatively less strong in e-commerce. JD seems to have found a perfect complementary partner. It could also be a lesson that they've learned from Alibaba. Ali has been aggressively investing in traffic. They own over 30% of Weibo, acquired Youku Tudou outright, and have a stake in cross-border e-commerce players such as Xiaohongshu or Little Red Book. In comparison, JD's partnerships so far with Toutiao and Sina have been much looser and thus less effective. It's showing up in their numbers. JD's last 12-month MAU as of Q1 2018 is just over 300 million, an increase of 3%. Ali, in comparison, reported a 7% growth. And there is also the interesting question of where does JD really stand in Camp Tencent? Remember that Tencent and Alibaba are sworn enemies, with Ali even going so far as to forbid investors in Ant Financial to also invest in Tencent-controlled companies. Yeah, that's because they each suck at one crucial thing: Alibaba and social networking, and Tencent and e-commerce. You can go back to Tech Buzz episodes five and eleven to learn more about why that is. Anyway, that's why Tencent made such a large bet on JD early on. Because no matter how many things it launched, and it launched quite a few e-commerce initiatives, it just didn't come anywhere close to challenging Alibaba's dominance domestically. So far, JD and Tencent has looked like a relatively happy alliance. They have jointly invested in quite a few other e-commerce players, including 863 million into apparel retailer VIP Shop last year. And they've also further expanded this marketing analytics partnership they created to help retailers better target consumers. By all accounts, it looks as if Tencent and JD are BFFs, and JD is Tencent's flagship e-commerce partner. But and there's always a but, right? But the JD and Tencent partnership really haven't unleashed the synergies that maybe Tencent was hoping for. Specifically, despite having first dibs on working with Tencent, JD hasn't really been able to move the needle with Tencent's most powerful product, WeChat. That might not have been a problem for JD if it weren't for the emergence of Pinduoduo. The social shopping app we covered back in episode two that now has about the same number of active users as JD in just three or so years. The kicker here is that Pinduoduo relies almost exclusively on WeChat for its growth. It has accomplished what JD could not: figure out a way to use WeChat to power e-commerce. No wonder then that Tencent, who has been in Pinduoduo since its Series B back in 2016. Has led its three billion dollar round this year, or at least that's the rumor. So there are some who think that JD may be losing favor with Tencent. Either way, it's a good idea for JD to find other friends, especially abroad, where a different set of competitive dynamics are at play. But I hope you don't think we're saying that JD is failing because it's not. In many ways, it's doing quite well. For example, take the recent JD Shopping Festival, the 618 festival that just concluded on June 18th. It's the founding date of JD, and it's their biggest sales event of the year. Of course, it's also the day on which they chose to make the Google announcement. By the way, I really think that JD was really clever to brand June 18th their own festival because, unlike Alibaba's Singles Day on November 11th, this one is JD specific. And although Alibaba keeps on churning out record sales each year for the Singles Day, which is the Chinese equivalent of Black Friday, actually every other retailer benefits, not just Ali. Last year, Alibaba recorded over twenty-five billion dollars in sales on Singles Day for a year-on-year -year increase of thirty-nine percent. But guess what? JD didn't fare too poorly either. In fact, it achieved nineteen billion dollars in sales, an increase of fifty percent from the previous year. Granted, JD counts the first eleven days of November, not just the eleventh. But realistically, there's so much pre-ordering going on in Ali's sites that it's probably more comparable than it looks. 
In any case, this year's shopping festival, which actually lasts from June first to the eighteenth, netted revenues of a hundred fifty nine billion dollars RMB, or just about twenty four point five billion USD for JD. That's an increase of thirty seven percent from last year. I thought that's pretty impressive. Janie's definitely not without its weaknesses, but it's not getting crushed by Alibaba by any means. Not yet, anyway, and not within China. Hopefully, Google can help in its overseas battles. Even if JD doesn't internationalize successfully, though, Richard Liu is still one of the most envied men in China, and not just because he's been so successful as an entrepreneur, but because of his second wife. His second wife, Nancy. Zhang Zetian is better known as Nai Cha Mei Mei, or Sister Milk Tea. She became famous for her beauty when, as a 16-year-old, a photo of her holding a cup of milk tea went viral on the Chinese web. Indeed, her fame was so out of control that when I was visiting the Microsoft Accelerator in Zhongguanshuan a few years ago, she had been already admitted into Tsinghua University as an undergrad and was interning there. The accelerator staff told me that getting a glimpse of her, getting a glimpse of Sister Milk Tea, was one of the primary selling points they had to startups. Later on, when she was studying abroad in New York, Richard Liu happened to be in town for an executive program, and they met and fell in love. It was the biggest deal. First, because they had like a two-decade gap. Second, because well, while Richard isn't ugly, he isn't exactly Prince Charming. Many predicted that the marriage is a sham, and Sister Milk Tea is only out for money. But here we are, three years into their marriage, and one kid later, they are consistently in the headlines for being the most loving couple in Chinese tech circles. Milk Tea has also become a powerful businesswoman in her own right. She invests actively, and she's known as a big philanthropist. This is a really popular couple, guys. They have so many memes about them. With their age gap and the celebrity status they have, they're kind of like a Chinese version of Amal and George Clooney. So why is this important to JD? Well, first of all, it amounts to a ton of free advertising. Secondly, Milk Tea, because of her beauty, has become a sort of fashion icon. She's become a regular VIP at all sorts of highbrow fashion events. Remember now what we said earlier about JD being known for consumer electronics and Alibaba winning at apparel. That's apparently less and less true. As of 2016, for new users on JD.com, the biggest category for spending has become fashion and apparel, accounting for 40% of sales. Does that have anything to do with the efforts of Milk Tea, who is one of JD's most visible spokeswomen? Some people definitely think so. For me, I really hope the JD Google Alliance works out because it makes for such a great story of U.S.-China collaboration. Yeah, I guess Walmart's already in there, but it's really not a tech company. Here's to seeing more of such deals in the future. We'd like to give a shout out to our partners at SubChina. In addition to our podcast here with Pan Daily, they publish the excellent Seneca Podcast, a weekly discussion of current affairs on China with journalists, writers, academics, policymakers, and business people. So while we only focus on tech, they really give you the entire overview. Go check them out, guys. Okay, that's all for this week, folks. Thanks for listening. We really enjoyed putting this together, and we're always open to any comments or suggestions. You can find us on Twitter. At Tech Buzz China, and my personal Twitter account is G I N Y G I N Y, and mine is Ray Ma. That's spelled R U I M A. We'll be back here same time next week. Tech Buzz China by Pan Daily is powered by the Seneca Podcast Network. Pandaily dot com is a new English language site that tells you everything about China's innovation. Our producers are Carol Yin and Kaiser Kuo, and our intern is Scott Du. Oh, 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 o